Hey everybody, welcome back to No Jumper News. It's Adam22, here with your man AD. Let's get right into these stories. So, first things first, a notorious drug kingpin who served decades in prison for murder and was in witness protection for testifying against his associates was killed in a drive-by shooting early Sunday morning. According to multiple reports, Alberto Alpo Martinez, who Cameron portrayed in the 2002 movie Paid in Full, was shot five times as he sat in his 2017 Dodge Ram truck on a street corner in Harlem. He was quickly rushed to a nearby hospital but couldn't be saved. According to reports, a high-ranking police source said that Martinez was in danger as soon as he returned to his old stomping grounds. You were in the witness protection program because you testified against other drug dealers. You made a lot of enemies who have a score to settle. When you return to the same area, word will get out very fast. He's back in the zone. It seemed pretty intentional when you shoot somebody five times, said the police source. There were no immediate arrests. In the mid-1980s, Alpo was one of the biggest drug dealers in New York and Washington, D.C., along with his homie Z Faison and Rich Porter, and later, Wayne Silk Perry. The movie Paid in Full was based on the story of Alpo and his partners. Alpo was dealing over 30 kilos a day at his height while stacking up millions in illegal proceeds. He was killed in the same neighborhood he dealt drugs in before being arrested on multiple drug and murder charges in 1991, accused of being behind the murders of two kingpin drug dealers. He was released from prison in 2015 while serving a 35-year sentence at ADX Florence, a federal supermax prison in Colorado. Okay, so regarding Alpo, I just want to quote this Vlad tweet that I saw earlier. He said, Out of all the places on earth where Alpo could spend his time, he chose Harlem, the place where he had the most enemies around the same people and their friends and relatives that he killed, robbed, and told on. It just goes to show the danger of ego. I took notes. Which I think is a very good point. There's been a lot of conversation over the past couple of years about the fact that Alpo has basically been allowed to be back in Harlem and nobody's done anything to him. It's kind of like the 6ix9ine situation, but like a lot less high profile. And then also 6ix9ine ain't really spending a lot of time in Brooklyn, you know? But uh, yeah, as far as Alpo getting killed, I mean, what the hell was he doing back in his hometown? He should have known that this was a very real possibility. Man, he's, he's been he's been down there, you know what I'm saying? And if you ever watched Paid in Full, you already know, man, Rico had that reputation. So I probably think that a lot of guys were still scared to touch him. Mm. And there was certain people that just, you know, was waiting, plotting. They finally pushed over the edge and they got their man. Yeah, I mean, let's be real. It's a pretty intimidating thing, I assume, to go shoot somebody in New York City, one of the most high surveillance, uh, high security places on earth. Even if you really, really hate somebody, it's going to take a bit of planning and, and, and a lot of guts if you want to go shoot somebody up. But at the same time, him being posted up in Harlem day after day like that, it's basically just like over and over spitting in the face of the people who got loved ones who got killed or are locked up due to that. So probably no, nobody should be too surprised. And at the end of the day, him putting himself in that environment, I mean, clearly he didn't want to live a quiet life off in Nebraska. He probably could have done that. He was in witness protection for all that time, you know? He could have done that. He chose not to, so it's hard to feel too bad about it. And then, too, like, I respect it, you feel me? The nigga, he came right back to where he was, you know what I mean? He probably knew the risk, and he probably wanted to die on that street. Maybe not in this way, but he knew he had it coming. Yeah, it just makes you uh, wonder what's going to happen to all the other snitches out there. Hopefully they get exterminated. <laughs> Two of the most popular up and coming rappers from New York City got into it at Rolling Loud over the weekend. The two rappers have been throwing subliminal shots at each other on social media for months, feuding over who's the king of Bronx drill music. A few months back, Ron Suno took to Instagram and stated, if you don't get neck tats and braids like me and dance like me, at least say thank you, nigga look up to me, and to disrespect the source. K Flag clapped back and said, don't ever count me out, got more money than your big dog. Ron Suno replied saying, we know the same people. Stop trying to front for these fans. We can link now. K Flock ended off with, you don't want to do that because no one is saving you. YK, what's up? But here on out, nothing else but doing what I do best in the streets with you. Footage from the concert emerged on Saturday night, showing Ron Suno and K Flock squaring up backstage at the festival. As the brawl broke out, the video seemingly shows Sumo getting surrounded by a group of Flock's people while getting attacked. <laughs> have been beefing since. Both Flocko and Suno acknowledged the fight afterwards on social media, 
K Flock affirmed that he and his crew got into an altercation with Suno. Why me and the gang just beat the shit out of Ron Suno and Bogard, he wrote. And rolling loud, nigga, Suno tried to give me a fire shaking, yeah, I right. told you wait till I catch you. He later added, y'all some chumps. Ron Suno also chimed in on the matter, but he downplayed the severity of the incident. He showed a photo of his bloodied hands before claiming that he and his friend ended up stripping Flock's crew of their clothing. God damn it. It's Ron Suno. Niggas get beat out their hoodie, he wrote. All my niggas still got their clothes, though. He added, niggas be with security getting beat on by a comedian. Four deep cause of pain. Why niggas be 30 deep still losing? Okay, so I'm not sure if I've actually shown you K Flock yet, but he's like up and coming drill protege out of the Bronx. He's crazy. And one of the things about him, I actually, I, I was talking to somebody who who is like the president of the label that he's signed to. And I said, like, he, he asked me if I heard of K Flock and if I want to interview him. I said, yeah, of course, let's line it up. I told him I was just watching videos of K Flock running around in the enemy projects on Instagram Live, wilding the fuck out. And the guy who signed him didn't even know about that. And I was like, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of felt bad for even telling him because it was a little too lit. But now we got K Flock out here beefing with Ron Suno. I don't know what Ron Suno's street card is like necessarily. I know that he really like made a name for himself doing the comedy thing online and everything. Uh, him and K Flock backstage at Royal Loud sounds like probably the best chance that they would have at getting a fair one in or at least a fair brawl without some shots going off. So this is this is kind of crazy. Never again bring these uh these type of gangs to K to K Flock's career. Mm. You could have lost him his goddamn deal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? These late labels is already scared to touch niggas when they come down to give them opportunities because they're afraid of the backlash and shit like this. But um I'm not familiar with the guys. I respect anybody that goes and knuckle up, keep it pushing. I don't think the labels are going to be scared of this labels kind of scared, attention. Bro. bro, he's beefing with Ron Suno. He's not beefing with like fucking, you know, some some crazy like gang thing, you know, whatever. It's like he's beefing with another dude from his city who realistically, I don't think that they're going to be likely to be shooting each other. And let's be real. This beef right here, this is the first time I've seen K Flock on Academics, even though he's like arguably one of the hottest rappers coming out of New York right now. So there's a lot more eyeballs on K Flock. Clearly, this is the first time we've talked about him on this show, right? Yeah. Because he got into a fight backstage, and it don't even matter that he like put out all these fire ass records. Uh, shout out to his boy Dougie, he's crazy too. But basically, I don't know, it's, 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 it's weird how this shit actually works in rap. You get into some shenanigans and it gets you way more attention than a bunch of good music. But K Flock really do got some fire ass music. So I'm thinking that this this ultimately will probably end up being a good thing for him, just having more eyeballs on him. I don't wanna listen to the nigga. You gotta listen to him. And Ron Suno, I don't know. Y'all gotta fight, I guess. We oh can run the fade God. here, right? Who gonna fight? Ron Ron Suno and K Flock. We're gonna get him in here. You should start having people like fight. Nah. I feel, and, and, and the future of this business might not really depend on that sort of thing. Porn. <laughs> YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. We'll be back real, real soon. Appreciate y'all.